today we are duping high-end decor from the Pottery Barn with much less expensive pieces from the thrift store. I had a request from one of my fabulous subscribers to make a wall art piece similar to the one that I found on the Pottery Barn website. It is this palm leaf shadow box wall art. This is such a cool piece of art. It would go with a lot of different styles and designs. I love the size, however, it is $399, which is quite expensive, and I know that we can recreate it for less. So the first thing that we need is a frame. I headed to my local thrift store. They always have such an amazing variety of frames there. I found one that had a thin frame, and it was square. It was the perfect size and shape, and the best part is that it was only $5.99. What we want to use is the frame and not the art that's inside. So we're gonna remove the art and the mat from the frame, and then I carefully lifted out the glass so that we were left with just the frame only. I don't know how long it was at the thrift store, so I washed it with a damp cloth to make sure it was nice and clean, so when we spray paint it, the paint will adhere to the frame. I'm going to be using some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint to paint our frame white. I took it outside and I sprayed it in the spray paint. I made sure that the entire frame was covered in the spray paint. I did the front, the sides, and painted the inside of the frame as well to make sure it was all one cohesive color. Once it was completely coated in the paint, I let it dry for two hours. While the paint is drying, this is the perfect time for us to get started on our palm leaf. We are going to make ours out of some poster board. I picked up mine at Target. They were only 99 cents, which is cheaper than in the Dollar Tree, so that's a great place to get your poster board. What I'm gonna do with my poster board is cut strips out of it. So I got my self-healing mat and I put my poster board over the top. Then I got a pencil and a ruler and I marked out one and a half inch wide segments. Then I got my rotary cutter and I cut the poster board into strips. One poster board was large enough to give me all the pieces that I needed to create this palm art. Once I had all the poster board strips, I cut them into various lengths. I did a seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 inch long strips. Once all of these segments were cut, I folded them in half. Then I cut the top with scissors into points. I repeated this process with all of my poster board pieces. Now it's time to create our fan. So I took the smallest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue in the center, pressed it together, and then I put some hot glue on the outside. Then I took my second folded segment of poster board and pressed it firmly to the first segment. I repeated the process of hot gluing the inside and the outside of the folded poster board pieces in ascending order until I had half of the fan hot glued and connected together. Then I got started on the second half of the fan. Again, I took the shortest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue on it and then I just hot glued all of the other poster board pieces together. This time I divided it up into three different segments. That way when I put it all together, I could move everything around and make sure that it was all nice and evenly fanned out. We need to create a background that's similar to our inspiration piece background. I have this fabric, it's leftover fabric. It's actually from my dining chairs and it is the perfect match to our inspiration piece. So what I'm gonna do with my fabric is put it over the self-healing mat and then take the back of the frame and place that over my fabric. Then I got a ruler and my rotary cutter and I simply just cut around the backing of the frame. This will give me a perfect square that will fit right on top of the backing. Once my square was cut out, I got some hot glue and I put it along the edge of the backing. I kept the hot glue to the edges, that way we didn't have any lumps or bumps in the center of the fabric. I continued to add the hot glue to the edges and then pressed the fabric into the hot glue. Now it's time to adhere the fan to the fabric. So what I did was I just took some hot glue and I put it on the back of the first half of the fan 
and then I pressed it firmly to the fabric. I added a bunch of hot glue in various places on the backing of the fan. You don't want this to move around, you want it to be stable. So adding a decent amount of hot glue will hold everything in place. Then I took the additional segments for the other side of the fan and added the hot glue to the back of those and placed them in the right spots to create the other half of my fan. I did cut some additional segments of poster board for filler just in case I needed it. So I did add a couple extra little fan pieces in there to make my palm leaf look nice and full. Now that the palm leaf is in place, we need to add a stem. So I just cut a rectangle and just rounded the top, got some hot glue, added it to the back and pressed it to the fan. Now in my inspiration piece, if you zoom in really close, you can see there's like some frayed pieces of either fabric or paper. So in order to recreate that, what I'm gonna do is get some cotton balls and I'm just gonna pull them apart, add a little bit of hot glue to the fan and then put the cotton ball right over the top. I think that this mimics our inspiration piece fantastically. Plus as a bonus, it is hiding all of the places where the fans are connected. You never wanna see the mechanics of how everything is stuck together. So these cotton ball pieces are a great way to hide all of that. Now that our palm leaf art is done, all we need to do is put it right back into the frame. I flip my frame over and put our art right back in the center. One thing that we are not going to be doing is putting the glass back over the front. We don't have the space for it because of the 3D palm leaf. Our inspiration piece was a shadow box. Ours is just going to be an open frame. We will have our 3D palm art stick out which is just fine for me. I actually really like it this way. So that is one liberty that we are going to take over our inspiration piece. And that's it, we are done. Look at how fantastic this palm art looks compared to our inspiration piece. I think they look so similar. They're similar in size, the leaves are the same, the backing's the same. I just really love the way that this turned out. And the best part is finding out the price differentiation from our inspiration piece to what I made. So let's calculate my expenses. In total, it cost me $14 to create my palm leaf wall art. I think that that is a steal. Finding the frame from the thrift store was a great jumping off point to create our wall art. For $5.99, it kept everything in budget. Using the poster board was cost efficient and all of the other little pieces didn't add up to much. So if you think you can't get a high-end piece of wall art, you can head to your thrift store. That's a great place to start. My water filter is from Waterdrop. They are the world leading water purification brand. My water drop filter showed up quickly to my door. It was packaged beautifully. I unboxed it and was able to put it together so easily. Then I filled up the 15 cup capacity tank to the max water line with regular old tap water. Then I charged the pitcher. It's gonna start out flashing green. Once it's a solid green, it means it is 100% charged and this charge will last you a month, so up to 30 days. Next, I took the filter and aligned it with the notches and just pressed it right inside. I heard a little click, so I knew it was securely in place. Then I simply put the water pumping unit back into the water tank and put the lid over the top. I love the modern clean look of this display and all you need to do in order to get the water to come out is tap it twice. I put my cup underneath it and water started to flow out in one second. When my cup was full, I simply tapped the dispensing key one time and the water stopped flowing. The water filtration system improves the quality and taste of your water. I love that I can take regular tap water and the filter will reduce 30 plus impurities. It's also PBA free. Another thing that I love about this countertop water filtration system is that it is movable. I can have it on my counter, I can put it in my fridge, I can take it outside so everybody can enjoy good tasting filtered water. I will leave links to Waterdrop and this countertop water filtration system in my description box so you can head on over to Waterdrop, check out all of their amazing 
water filtration options, and pick one out that will be perfect for you and your family. Cake stands are one of those items that I could never get enough of. So when I saw this beautiful cake stand on the Pottery Barn website, I knew I really wanted to dupe it. This is a Mason stoneware cake stand. It's classic, beautiful, and would be perfect for any party. The price of this cake stand is $59, and I know that we can recreate one for so much less. At my thrift store, they have this section that has chargers and trays and dishware. I found this wood charger that was the perfect size and shape, and it was only $3.99. So now we have the top of our cake stand. We just need to find a base. I had a hard time trying to find one that mimicked exactly our inspiration piece. But while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to the vase section and I found a terracotta pot that didn't have a raised edge around the top. It was sleek, clean, it was the right shape. It was perfect for our base. Now I've got both pieces of my cake stand. So I'm gonna take them outside and I'm gonna spray them in the white gloss Rustoleum spray paint. I made sure the top and the sides of the terracotta pot were completely covered in this paint. And then I moved on to the wood charger. I spray painted the top and the sides of this charger. Once everything was well coated in the white spray paint, I let these pieces dry for two hours. After two hours, I came back and I flipped everything over so I could do the opposite side. I sprayed the inside of the terracotta pot and then I also sprayed the underside of the wood charger. Once these pieces were completely coated in the paint, I let them dry for another hour. Now all we need to do is adhere these two pieces together. I added some E6000 to our terracotta pot and then placed our wood charger in the center. Once my two pieces were in place, I let them dry overnight. Occasionally, I like to add a protective coating over the top, and I know I'm gonna be using this cake stand frequently, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to spray it in a protective coating. So what I'm gonna be use is this Krylon Satin Finish, Permanent Protective Finish. So I took my cake stand back outside and I sprayed it in this protective finish. Once I was finished spraying the protective coating on the cake stand, I let it dry for another hour. And that's it, you guys. We are finished with our Pottery Barn Dupe cake stand. Look at how fantastic this cake stand looks. I love using versatile pieces like this. You can use a cake stand like this for displaying decorative objects, a candle. Of course, you can use it to display your beautiful food. You can put a cloche over the top. I love having multi-purpose pieces of home decor. They are great on your budget. And I think that my cake stand looks almost identical to our Inspiration Pottery Barn cake stand. The thing that is not identical is the price. After calculating all the costs that I spent to create my cake stand, the price was $13.96. That's a great savings over our Inspiration piece. I love this cake stand and I love the price. A few of you have requested that I do some coastal DIYs. So our next Pottery Barn dupe is going to be recreating this coral snack bowl. This is very nautical and whimsical. It would be a fun way to display some snacks at an outdoor party. This piece is $34.50. So let's recreate it for less. At the thrift store, I found this coral bowl. It was plastic, it was blue, it was a great shape, and it was a great price. The price was only $2.99. In order to get that craggly coral feel, we are going to add some detail to our coral bowl. So what I got was some Dollar Tree bath salts and some Mod Podge. I painted the Mod Podge onto the coral bowl and then I sprinkled the bath salts right over the top. I just continued to add the Mod Podge to the bowl and then sprinkle all of this bath salts over the top. The bath salts will stick fantastically to the Mod Podge. So once I was done with the inside of the bowl, I flipped it over and I did the exact same thing on the underside. 
I put the Mod Podge on there and then I sprinkled the bath salts over the top. I did leave the bottom of the bowl plain because we want to be able to set it down on a table flat. Once this was finished, I let it dry for an hour. And then I looked at it and I wanted to have a little more detail on there. I needed to have some more coral. So I decided to do a second layer over the top. So I just simply added some more Mod Podge with my sponge brush. I just painted it over the top of the original coral bath salt pieces and sprinkled the bath salts over the top. This makes the coral design even more exaggerated. So once I was done with the inside, again, I flipped it over and I did the underside. Once all of my bath salts were in place, I let it dry for three hours. As an alternative to bath salt, you could use some little pebbles or sand. That would work great too. Now we need to paint our bowl white. So I took it outside and I sprayed it in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that we've used in all of our projects thus far. I made sure that the bowl was completely covered in the spray paint. I did the inside, the outside, and underneath the bowl. Once it was 100% coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. <laughs> you guys, look at how cool this bowl is. It's got that jagged, uneven feel that real coral has. And if you're worried about this stuff coming off the bath salts, it's on there really good. Between all the Mod Podge layers and the spray paint, it's stuck on there really good. So you don't have to worry about the bath salts flaking off all over the place. I absolutely love the way that this looks. You could put some decorative pieces inside. You could put a candle inside. You could put an anchor shell, some nautical decor in there. You could also mimic our inspiration piece and put a glass bowl inside and fill it with some food and put it out at a summer party. How fun would that be? I added up all the expenses and the total cost to create my coral bowl was $10.25. That's a great savings. Do they look absolutely identical? No, but this one definitely has the spirit of our inspiration piece. So for all of you nautical lovers out there that are looking for some coastal design ideas, I hope this works for you. Some of the best thrifted pieces are items that you did not expect to find. Because I had been scouring the Pottery Barn website for a while, I knew what was on there. So when I came across this gorgeous glass pitcher at the thrift store, I knew it was, first of all, it's simply stunning. But secondly, it mimicked a pitcher that I saw on the Pottery Barn website. The pitcher on the Pottery Barn website is $99. And mine is only $2.99. I scooped this picture up so fast, not only because it's beautiful, but because I don't have anything like it. Look at how pretty the handle is on this one. And I actually like mine better because of the spout. It has a beautiful dip and curve to it. This would be a gorgeous way to display a specialty drink at a party, or you could just add some of that filtered water and put some lemon slices in it. The difference between the Pottery Barn pitcher and my pitcher is that theirs comes with a stirring stick and I am going to have to use a spoon, <laughs> which is just fine with me. In order to save that much money, I didn't have to pay $99. I paid $2.99 to get mine. So when you're at your thrift store, just look around. You never know what you're gonna be able to find. And these beautiful pieces will elevate the look and feel of your home while staying on a budget. I hope you liked these Pottery Barn versus a Thrift Store dupes today. I had so much fun doing them. Remember that you deserve to live beautifully every single day in your own way. And I think today we proved that you can do it on a budget. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.